All right. Well, we've talked on the program before about the National Labor Relations Board uh, and the sneaky decision to allow parent companies of individually owned franchise businesses to be considered joint employers. And we've also talked on the program about how this would virtually upend the franchise business model, which has been a proven way for entrepreneurs to become business owners and job creators. And we've spoken with organizations representing business owners. But this morning we have the pleasure with speaking uh, to speak with a real business owner and job creator who knows firsthand how this rule would affect the franchise business model and also economic freedom in America. We welcome Heidi Ganahl to the show. She is the founder of Camp Bow Wow, which has locations all over the country, including right here in the metro Detroit area. I believe, Heidi, uh, there's a Camp Bow Wow in Clarkston, St. Clair Shores, Brighton, Commerce Township, just to name a few. Welcome to the program. Hi, Kathy. I'm so glad to be here today. Well, you know, this is so important because, uh, and I'm glad you were able to join us, uh, because so many people think this NLRB joint employer thing is all about fast food restaurants like McDonald's. But uh, let me ask you, the franchise model is responsible for so many other businesses and types of industries like doggy care. It is. I mean, we have... A couple hundred franchises around the country just for doggy daycare and overnight boarding. But when you think about all the dry cleaners and the coffee shops and the child care centers, franchising is really an integral part of America and a great way to grow a business or start a business in our country. Heidi, talk about how the franchise business model worked so well for you and Camp Bow Wow. How did you start and where does Camp Bow Wow stand now in terms of individual business owners that you've helped get their starts? Well, we've had just a great run. Uh, We started in December of 2000 with our first Camp Bow Wow in Denver and then opened a second corporate-owned location and then started franchising in 2003. Um, And it was a beautiful model for Camp Bow Wow because people love their pets and people were really passionate about starting a business that they love and, and wanted to spend time with but also could make money at. And people love their doggies enough to spend a lot of money on them to the tune of about $60 billion a year. So we knew there was an opportunity there. But I didn't have a lot of capital. I was in my you know, early 30s and uh, raising a child alone, and I was you know, kind of cash-strapped. And so I decided to look at franchising because it's a way to grow a business model without having a lot of capital and giving people the opportunity to own their own businesses but follow a model that I'd already proven worked. Well, so how many businesses, uh, I'm sorry, how many do you have right now? I apologize if you already said it. And how many jobs would you say you were able to facilitate uh, the creation thanks to the way the franchise business model has been set up and, and worked for decades, really? Well, we have 127 camps open, about another 50 home buddies franchises, which are in-home pet care, and then another 25 to 30 in development uh, for camps. So a couple hundred around the country. And we believe that um, we've got about 3,000 employees in the Camp Bow system out there right now working for camps. Wow. So in franchising, uh, I should mention, um, as a, a woman business owner, franchising has also been a key path to business ownership, not just for women, but minorities as well. Yes, about one in five franchises owned by a minority. So it's a fabulous model for minority-owned businesses and Um, It just gives every American an opportunity to own their own business and to make a living doing what they love. And again, the franchise business model has helped uh, the creation of, I believe, according to the International Franchise Association, 850,000, 875,000 individual businesses and created jobs for more than 18 million people. I mean, that's quite significant. It really is one of the backbones of American industry, and it's done. It's just a great model, and to see the NLRB coming in and trying to tweak that model and make it so that uh, it's not going to work for us as franchisors and really not for franchisees either. They don't want um, someone telling them who they can hire, fire, and getting involved in their day-to-day business. They do a beautiful job of it, and it's worked well for years and years and years, and I'm I'm pretty upset that this is happening right now to our, our amazing industry. Yeah, perfect segue into my question about exactly how the NLRB would it would impact you. And you mentioned it a little bit um, by saying uh, the and, and we'll use McDonald's as an example because that's something everybody can can uh, you know put their mind around. But I, I would like you to personalize it to Camp Bow Wow. But basically, saying the parent company of McDonald's 
is all of a sudden the joint owner of the McDonald's down the street in, in Bridgeport, Michigan. So therefore, and all the McDonald's around the country, if something happens at the Bridgeport, Michigan McDonald's and an employee wants to file a complaint, it's not just against that uh, Bridgeport McDonald's owner. It is against the parent company and by default, all the other McDonald's restaurants, right? Is that how, how you, you know, is that the same uh, way it would affect you at Camp Bow Wow? That's right. So instead of being responsible for 40 people at our corporate location in Broomfield, we are responsible now for the 3,000 out there. And financially, the model just doesn't work when you, uh, when you take that on. And the franchisees are really upset. They don't want that because they like running their business. That's why they did a franchise. They want to make the hiring and firing decisions and really be responsible for their own decisions and their day-to-day operations, too. So you have been speaking with some of your franchisees uh, who, who are upset. What are the, some of the things that they are telling you? They are telling me, boy, you know, we've got a great model and we do a great job running our business out here in the field. And I don't want to be responsible for Joe, who owns the business, you know, all the way across the country. And maybe, you know, he didn't make such a great decision in a hiring or a firing. Why should I be responsible for that person when I own my own business and I independently operate it? That's right. National Labor Relations Board is a body of unelected bureaucrats making decisions on behalf of big labor, not on behalf of business owners and job creators. Therefore, Heidi, you have joined uh, an effort called Defend Main Street, uh, and there's a website, defendmainstreet.com. But what does Defend Main Street hope to accomplish? Well, it really wants, it, it's a, a tool to educate people on what's happening, because this is really going on behind doors, and it's, it, it hasn't gotten a lot of media um, until uh, Job Creators Network and the International Franchise Association started to shine the light behind the, the doors about what's really happening. And so we've got to get people educated and get them interested in how this is going to affect their day-to-day life. I mean, when they go to their local coffee shop or when they go to their local dry cleaners or when they go to their local McDonald's, that local McDonald's is most of the time is owned by an independently owned or an independent franchisee. So its, it's goal is to educate people, but also to get people mobilized around um, getting in touch with our legislators and getting in touch with um, the folks at the NLRB to tell them we're not okay with this decision. That's right. And you go to defendmainstreet.com. There is a website uh, with uh, more information about the NLRB and what this rule would do, the joint employer ramifications uh, on small business owners and employees, a video featuring your American dream story so people can actually see Heidi Ganahl of Camp Bow Wow and a petition to let the NLRB uh, that this cannot happen. Uh, any final thoughts on on the uh, Defend Main Street? Street.com, the joint employer uh, recommendation, uh, and uh, what you and Job Creators Network and the International Franchise Association are doing? Well, I think it's a really easy way people can help out. It's just to go to the website, defendmainstreet.com, sign the petition. The more people we can get on that petition, the more impactful it's going to be. And if you want to take it a step further, contact your local legislature and tell them to get in touch with the NLRB and tell them they don't like this decision. Um, if you want to learn more about it, there's some articles on defendmainstreet.com and some information. But it's it's a very, very important issue and one that uh, we've got to get the word out about. If people care about their local business owners, this is a great way to support them. All right. Heidi Ganahl, the uh, founder of Camp Bow Wow, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much for bringing attention to a very, very important sneaky goings-on in, in uh, Washington, D.C. by the National Labor Relations Board. Well, thanks for having me, Kathy, and everybody have a doggone great day. There you go. All righty. Thank you so much, Heidi. It is time now for...